ஹாய் ஹலோ வணக்கம் அண்ட் வெல்கம் பேக் டு அட் அனதர் எபிசோட் ஆன் லிட்டில் ஸ்லாஃப் யூடியூப் சேனல் டுடே இன் திஸ் வீடியோ வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு சி அபவுட் நாட் தி யூனிஃபார்ம் ரேண்டம் டைமர் பட் தி காசியன் ரேண்டம் டைமர் ஸோ இன் கேஸ் ஐ யூ ஹாவ் நாட் வாஷ் மை வீடியோஸ் ஆன் த டைமர்ஸ் ஐ ஹாவ் கிரியேட்டட் அண்ட் ஷேர் த வீடியோ ஆன் கான்ஸ்டன்ட் த்ரூ கோட் டைமர் அண்ட் அ வீடியோ ஆன் கான்ஸ்டன்ட் டைமர் அண்ட் அ வீடியோ ஆன் uniform random timer and recently I have released a video on precise throughput timer so in this video we are going to see about the gaussian random timer so we will see what is a gaussian random timer how does it work and what are the differences between the gaussian random timer and the other four timers which we have discussed in this in the previous videos and i will tell you which timer to use based on your requirement so i'll also tell you the difference between the uniform random timer and the gaussian random timer so before we move on to the video this is me you are sanchan gam i welcome you all to little so youtube channel please do don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you have not subscribed yet share the video with your friends don't forget to like the video and comment your questions and feedback in the comment section and in fact it has improved me and the subscribers and the viewers as well so please don't forget to subscribe ask my questions comment your feedbacks thanks so much and then with no further delay let's go to the video so as like any other timers let's let me disable this because these were used for the previous demo so let me remove them so now let's add a gaussian random timer so i'm going to the simple controller right click on it go to add then the timer and then the fifth timer which is the gaussian random timer so i'm choosing it let me drag it to the top after the first request so like any other timers the this timer has two properties one is the deviation in milliseconds so most of the times these comes in milliseconds and then the constant delay offset that again comes in milliseconds so what are these what is a deviation and what is a constant delay offset so the deviation is something like in the name it suggests the random part so it tries to deviate or it tries to throw some randomized value on top of the constant delay so let's try this way so first let me make the deviation to 0 so it will be 0 milliseconds there won't be any deviation and i'll move on to the constant delay and i'll add 3 1000 milliseconds which is 3 seconds i do not have any other timer every other timer has is been disabled so there are no timers and the gaussian random timer is the only timer which is present in the sorry uh, gaussian random timer is the only timer which is present in the thread group and i have one thread which with one loop count so just to check whether how does it run i'm clearing everything now i'm going to the view results tree and let me even add another listen which is a summary report to make sure to check how does the response time goes and then let me start the test and then going back to the view results tree so here on top of the screen you can see 3 seconds for every 3 seconds you can see there is one request that is popping up so the first request came at 3rd second that second at the 6th second the third one as the 9th 12th and then the last one will be at the 15th so this shows that the timer which we have added which is 3 seconds for all the requests so here there are like six request and for all six request it has distributed the 3 seconds as the timer for all these requests right for all the requests which is part of this particular controller so now what we will do is let me make this constant delay to 0 and i will change the deviation to 3000 milliseconds which is now 3 seconds okay i'm saving it and then let's go to the summary report so here you can see the average minimum maximum response times let me clear it let me clear everything and then i'm going back to the view results tree starting the test and here let's watch it so 3 seconds we got the first request 5 6 we have got the second one 7th we have got four third so within 10 seconds we have got all the six requests but what is the deviation here we have kept it as 3 so that means the deviation 
will start any time between 0 to the maximum of 3000 milliseconds, which is 3 seconds. So it can be either 0 or it can be maximum of 3000 or it can be even 1 second uh, or 2 second or 2.5. So it can be any number of seconds. But this deviation here will be a random. So this is the part which makes the values goes random. So next thing we'll do is let's have values in both the deviation and the constant delay. So let me add another 3 seconds to the constant delays. Let's save this clear and before that let's go to the view summary report and see everything looks fine and then let's go to the start so now let's wait in the view results tree so we can see here so it should be after every three seconds so now we're crossing six the deviation is getting added to it and now another three seconds plus the deviation which is the random timer here and then anytime we can expect the request it can be a maximum of six seconds because we have three plus three and now we will we can expect the fourth request anytime now so again i'm saying it's like three plus three so now we have got fourth and fifth request very quick in in the consecutive requests and then the sixth one with lesser delay so we would have observed that for the first and second it was like normal delays and for the third one it took a lot a longer delay right and then for the fifth fourth fifth and sixth it, it like took like very real so now you would have asked me like already we have other timers and in fact even we have checked about the another timer which is the uniform random timer let me just drag it up to the top and it has even the constant the random delay and then the constant delay so same way we have the deviation and the constant delay so what is the difference between the gaussian timer and the uniform random timer so you might have all the you might have have had these questions in your mind right by this time because we were almost already seeing all the about all these timers in our videos and you must have definitely have this question for so why why should we have two different timers with the same name with a similar kind of functionality so let me explain you uh, explain it to you now so before we see the difference let me first tell you about the gaussian random timer so this gaussian random timer here which which is a timer that introduces randomness into the test execution by generating random passes between requests which we all know through the deviation and the constant delay following a Gaussian which is a normal distribution. So the purpose of this particular timer is to simulate more realistic and unpredictable user behavior as real world user actions often exhibit some level of randomness in timing. So for example in a real world people who are more into the infra IT information technology, they used to book their tickets very quick or they used to add items to the cart real quick. But people who are like, you no know, naive to the system, who are like very new to the system, so they might take a lot of time. They, they want to understand how the system works, so they will take a lot of time. So this particular Gaussian random timer, again, I'm telling you, this simulates more realistic and unpredictable user behavior as real world user actions exhibit right so what are the advantages of using why should i use use the gaussian random, gaussian random timer what's the advantage of using it so the first part is the realism in user behavior simulation so the gaussian distribution closely resembles natural patterns seen in user behavior because it's common for users to have varying response times when interacting with the system and a gaussian random timer helps replicate that randomness that randomness behavior and then avoiding patterns so with constant timers like what we have like we have some of the other timers we, we have discussed earlier so the constant timer here let me just drag it to the top oh, sorry it's like not responding for some time and then we have another timer which we discussed in our another video the constant throughput timer so these Timers, the constant timers. So there is a risk of creating patterns in the test execution, which may not accurately represent actual user behavior. And again, when it comes to the Gaussian random timer, they help avoid such patterns by introducing randomness, which makes the test scenario more realistic. Because even you have, we have a lot of options to calculate throughput, but still they are constant. And next thing is the load variation. So what is load variation? This Gaussian random timer helps in creating a more varied and dynamic load on the server. 
because that's useful for stress testing and identifying potential bottlenecks. So in case if you are running a test to for a stress test, what timer should I use? So here is your answer. For a stress testing, you can use the Gaussian random timer. And if you want to identify any potential bottleneck like CPU utilization or the memory utilization or some bottlenecks or lower garbage collection, for those scenarios, you can use the Gaussian random timer. Okay, so I will discuss a lot of advantages. So we have another question in our mind like, doesn't have, doesn't it have any other disadvantage? Yes, it do. It does have like any other component. What is the Gaussian random timer disadvantage? First thing is the, is the complexity in analysis. So Gaussian distribution introduces a level of complexity when analyzing the test results. The randomness which we observe or which comes as an output of this Gaussian random timer may make it harder to pinpoint specific performance issues as the timing of request becomes less predictable because they are constant and they are predictable as I said. And next thing is the overhead. So by introducing these kind of or these level of randomness, they come with some computational overhead because the generation of random values based on a Gaussian distribution might slightly impact the overall performance of the test. Although it is a most welcome timer for the stress test, but still it makes some impact on the overall performance of the test. Next is the configuration challenges. So configuring a Gaussian random timer requires understanding the parameters of the distribution, such as the mean, the deviation, and incorrectly configured timers may lead to undesirable testing behavior. So now let's come back to the differences between the uniform and the Gaussian random timer. So the Gaussian random timer, the distribution works in a way that it generates random values following a Gaussian, which is a normal distribution. And when it comes to the behavior, the passes between requests are more likely to cluster around a mean value. So the point which we discussed in the disadvantage, we need to understand about the mean value. With some requests having shorter passes, we have seen in the, in the, the video previously, there some has shorter passes and some have longer passes. So this closely simulates natural variations. As I told you, this closely simulates natural variations in user behavior. When it comes to the configuration, it requires parameters such as mean, which is the average and the deviation to define the shape of the Gaussian distribution, right? So by, by this time, we must have understand as we discussed the word mean multiple times. So you should know about the mean, you should know about the deviation to define the shape of the Gaussian distribution time. And by the time you use it often, you might be well versed in using it. And now the uniform random timer, which we have already seen. So the uniform distribution timer generates random values following a uniform distribution. How is the behavior of it? So the passes between the requests are equally likely to occur across the entire specified range because every value within the range has an equal probability of being chosen and this creates a more evenly distributed randomness rather than the Gaussian thing right and then when it comes to the configuration it requires parameters such as constant offset delay we know here constant delay offset and random delay maximum to define the range within which the random values will be generated so overall these both timers which we discuss here the uniform random timer and the Gaussian random timer introduces randomness into the test execution the types of distribution they follow sets them apart Gaussian random timer aims to replicate a more natural and varied user behavior with passes clustering around a central mean on the other hand uniform random timer provides a more evenly distributed randomness where any value within the specified range is equally likely so finally, when it comes to choosing between these timers, it depends on the specific testing goals and the desired simulation of user behavior. If you want a more realistic representation of how users interact with the system, Gaussian random timer must, must might be the suitable timer. If a more uniform and evenly distributed randomness is sufficient, then the uniform random timer is the better choice. So with that, I come to an end. So until I meet you in another interesting video, it's bye-bye from Asin Shanmugam and Little Slaw.